Hey guys, this is Eskimo Poodle, and we are back with Let's Play Okami HD on the PlayStation Network. Last time, we finished up uh, the Suta Ruins by defeating the Spider Queen, and rescued the dog Ume for the kid, um... Whatever that kid's name was. You know, the one that was all crying about stuff over here when we had to fish with him for a little bit. Uh, I'll remember his name eventually, but the point is, we rescued his dog, and his dad told him he had to go and fix the bridge. Um, but since we now have the br uh, vine technique, we can do a few things out here in the Agata Forest that we couldn't do before. Primarily, use them to get to several flower thingy-majigs. So just vine up to them, and for the first one, you get stray bead number, I do believe, 16, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, not 16. Um... Let me see, what number is that? Okay, fine, uh, straight bead 15. There we go, that was close. Yeah, yeah, find them all, get a reward. It's gonna take us a while to find them all, though. Like, the very last minute of the game to find them all, literally. And over here, we get a nice little treasure to sell. Which brings us closer to learning our techniques. By the way, a few uh, things I wanted to mention about a few trophies that I was going to point out. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Okay, grab life by the leash. Um, this one right here says increase your solar energy ink pot astral pouch levels to maximum capacity. What that means is in the status screen where you spend your praise to... Level, uh, level up your abilities. That means um, all the all four of those need to be maxed out, and then you get the achievement. It doesn't count towards the sun fragments you get. That doesn't count towards this achievement right here. Just so you guys know. And even though it doesn't say it, you actually do have to increase your purse too, not just the ink pots, the pouches, and the and the health. So just so you guys know, um, fish tome. Like I said, we can do fishing mini games. I'm gonna list all the fish you can get at various places. Uh, travel guide that's just um, well that's just like the little the little tips you get from you know like the travel guide is digging or whatever You'll, we'll get most of those throughout the story you don't have to hunt for most of those uh, treasure tome that's why we're collecting all the treasures because you get a trophy for all of them uh, most of them aren't missable some of them do have a one time or a or a, a one find I guess you can't you can't miss most of them I don't think, but some of them you only get one of. But you can still sell them because it's okay, still count. Uh, on the wanted list right here, this there's more than one wanted list. I think there's four, maybe five. I think it's four, and you just got to beat all of them, not just one particular one list, all of them. Um, collect all three beads. Which animal tome? This right here. This means you're feeding all the animals, not not just like a you don't got you don't got to feed 100% of every animal. You just have to feed one animal of each type basically so yeah uh, this right here learn all god techniques to fill up your technique scroll teach an old dog new tricks that doesn't mean your brush techniques that means your uh, techniques you buy from the old man and he has I believe three dojos so you can't get that for a while but yeah that's not brush techniques that's actually the stuff you can buy from that old fart uh, let's see the bestiary uh, cherry tree rank right here uh, this is basically kind of an enhanced version of the of the after battle screen um, it basically you have to have more than 40 hours played or something like that you have to have less than I think three deaths you have to have a certain amount of praise collected I'm don't remember I'll I'll, I'll put all this I'll put this one in the uh, video description if I can remember um, but yeah, you just gotta get a certain amount of stuff and by the way if you die from an astral pouch that does an astral, and an astral pouch uh, brings you back to life I mean that's not gonna count towards the deaths you actually have to go to the game over screen like three times or four times or however many it is for it to count uh, let's see and like I said before the devil gate one right here that's all the uh, that's the three big devil gates uh, the ones that have like ten waves of really hard enemies uh, let's see and that's pretty much it for the time being I just wanted to get those out of the way real quick, just so, just to point out a few things. All right, get out of here. All right, we got one more thing we can do here in Agata Forest, if we can ever remember where it's at. 
By the way, I used my gold dust to go ahead and power up my reflector if I didn't do it last episode. I'm, I don't remember if I did. I just know I just did it anyways, so either way, it's powered up. Alright, we want to go up to this little ledge right here where we got a... where we had to crack the wall with the lily pad or use the lily pad to use our cherry bomb in order to crack the wall. When you get over the fence, you'll give bastard. There we go. Much better. And as you can see, there's another flower thingy. A uh, Konoha Blossom, or whatever the heck you call these damn things, I never remember. And for getting this, we get a another stray bead, number 17. And that's everything we can do in Agata Forest now. Except get this clover right here, which... Okay, we can't get it, because I... I guess we can't get it. I kind of forgot about that. Alright, basically now we want to follow that little kid. Um, what the fuck was his name? Kotaku? Komei? I don't remember his name. Um, what was your son's name, sir? I remember your name, yeah. You told him to build a bridge, you idiot. Okay, why are you going to tell your kid to br build a bridge and then all of a sudden, like five minutes later, oh, I got, I'm worried about him building a bridge. You old fart. Alright, anyways, let's offload these, uh, treasures here real quick. We're getting close to the stuff I want to buy at the dojo since we only need one more, one more ability from that dojo, I think, because I think, I think we already learned all the other ones. Yeah, we did. We only need that last one, the Golden Fury. Anyways, let's just head over here. Yeah, we can't cut this rock yet. So don't even try. It's not gonna it's not gonna happen. And there's the little guy. Kokari, there we go. I don't know how I forgot his name, but oh well. Yeah, that's gonna make a fine bridge there, Sonny. What are you gonna do? Just stand there and have everyone tight walk, uh, tight rope walk across it? Oh, Susano, you idiot! <laughs> Puzzle flop. Kind of like the uh, the Rapids ride at Six Flags, right? Yeah, a little tiny fishing pole is not gonna stop a uh, 300-pound log right there. Yeah, this isn't gonna happen. At least not that I'm aware of. Oh sure, bite onto his ass, Amy. Good kid. Good doggy. Alright, what we gotta do here in this little section is you see all these Konoha blossoms off to the side or whatever? You basically gotta use your brush to draw six lines from the blossoms to these little pegs right here on the side of the log and you have roughly three minutes to do it and the one thing to remember about this is that time stops when you have your brush out but it doesn't stop, stop the timer but it stops the log from moving and when the the ink is green like that that means you know you have a you know you have a connection and so somehow I missed that because if you try to if you try to connect to more than one thing at once then it's just gonna assume hey screw you you're not gonna get anything out of it so you gotta do that and then, yeah, this part can be kind of tricky, so just take your time. You don't get any bonuses for finishing it under a certain amount of time or anything, so don't worry about that. 
And it can be kind of hard to see those stupid flowers as you're passing them by at light speed, but... Ah, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, we should have two more. There we go, one more. Yeah, it's not really all that hard, it's more irritating than anything. And there we go. It can give people trouble sometimes, but... Ah, well. Wow, that's uh, very conveniently placed exactly at the point that we started at. I, f I find it hard to believe that we managed to do all that within the, like, quarter of a second that we had before the log passed us by, but... Oh, well. Suspension of disbelief, I, I guess. No, you didn't do shit, kid. Why well, you gotta empower the little twerp? Okay, how about not thinking that doggy, and how about thinking this doggy, the one that did all the work? Ume, you didn't do crap. You sat there in the spider and waited for us to come rescue you. With your little flower print on your side of your... side. Yeah, where does Susano run off to anyways? Yeah, he probably found a good place to take a nap. And yeah, we get a little bit of praise out of it, so I guess that helps a, a little bit. But yeah, it's not really a tough minigame, it's more just a irritating minigame than anything. I don't know what happens if you fall into the water. Okay, I guess you just get... I guess you just end up back at the log. Okay, I didn't realize that. I thought you might have, like, got swept to another area, but I never tried it. And, ooh, there's a treasure chest over there. It's, oh, it's hidden under leaves, you son of a bastard. How are you gonna do that to me? Oh, look, there's buddies, so we're gonna feed these little bastards. I wonder why these guys give more praise than, like, the... Sparrows or nightingales, or well, maybe they don't get more than nightingales, but oh well, they give out a fairly decent amount. All right, ink bullets. We went over this last time, but might as well do it one more time. Um, something to notice about the ink bullets uh, is when you okay for most skills, if you try to Let's say you're trying to power slash an enemy and you have two enemies you want to power slash. You have to power slash them both at the same time. If you try to p power slash uh, one, uh, lift up the, the drawing pad or whatever and uh, slash the other one, it's not going to count either one. The good thing about ink bullets is, let's say you have like 30, 30 shots of ink bullets. I, d I don't know how many shots you actually get, I'm just making up a number. Um, if you have like two enemies you want to do, you, and you want to hit each one with ink bullets, you can. You can actually put like 10 on one and 15 on another, and it'll actually count them all, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. And Spider Queen, Bestiary, yeah. Yeah, we went over this thing, but... Yeah, he doesn't know the thing of pain until I slash his eyeballs in his little shell, but I guess if that's what you want to call not knowing the thing of pain, she seemed to fear the bite of my blade well enough. Even though it wasn't really a blade, it was more of a... a brush stroke. I guess maybe the pen is mightier than, mightier than the sword, at least in this game. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say right here because my stupid recording canceled out for like the next 30 seconds or so. So, I'm probably just gonna leave the rest of this blank because I don't remember what the heck I was talking about when I made the video and the stupid recording was muted, so, oh well. Alright, and now we're about to head off into a new area of the map, so how about we get to it? Ooh. 
how much you want to bet this place is going to be cursed, just like the last couple of places we've been to. I'll bet you a dollar is going to be cursed. Great Plains and the Mountains. Uh, I guess if it's surrounded by mountains, there could be a the plains and the in between them all, I guess, but not sure how that works. Prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Well, I prepare for the best and hope for the worst in my in my daily life. It works out pretty well. Ah, gee, look at that. It's cursed. What a surprise. Nah, I don't think we will. I mean, sometimes we find one, sometimes we don't. It'd be kind of cool if, like, you didn't find one. And they just remain cursed for the rest of the game. That'd be pretty awesome, in my opinion. But, I don't think the game has the balls to do that. I think it'll actually make me... I think it'll actually make me, uh... Find the tree and fix it. Not a lot of treasures to get yet. But these guys right here... These guys I like. They're stressed out, and they each have a little side quest for you to do uh, later on in the game. You get a little bit of praise out of it. Kusa Village. I wonder where that's at. Probably around here somewhere, since he's talking about it. It's up on Mount Kamiji, where the big windmill is. Terrifying growls. What, like a dog like growling in his sleep? Or something worse. So you ran all the way through the curse zone, get all the way down here, and then realized you ran through the curse zone. Way to go, Slick. Way to go. Well, you're certainly a doomsayer, aren't you? Okay, if, usually with the little green arrow you're supposed to see something new. Oh, you only had one little errand to run a Kusa. City checkpoint. Not sure where that's at, but we'll figure it out eventually, I guess. Your most precious tool of the trade? What the heck is that? Well, you want to tell me what that Oso oh sacred tool is? Wait, moles. What oh, moles? If you're being terrorized by moles, that's pretty sad, buddy. Ah, well, some people. Uh, there should be a treasure chest around here somewhere if I can find it. Ah, uh, let me see. Where are you at? I think it might be... Let's see, where's it at? Come here. Where are you? Either way, there's a buried treasure around here with a uh, glass beads in it, if we can ever find it. Eh, we'll find it sooner or later. It's not like it's gonna just disappear on us before we have a chance to do anything else. I'm pretty sure it's on their left side, or in between them. Um, maybe it's over here? No. Be nice. Excuse me. It'd be nice if it was nighttime, then we could. Hey, how come I can't cut those down? It'd be nice if it was nighttime, then we could just like see the little, the little hidden glow. Yeah, sometimes they hide those chests really well, and you can't see that little knob that's the top of the chest. And sometimes you can see it from half a block away. And these guys did a real jo good job of hiding it this time, so... I want to talk to this guy right here. This guy right here, this guy can help make you rich. The reason why is... So another place has changed for the worse. It used to be so nice to relax with a divine wind. Yeah, sounds pretty nice. Stop blowing, it's not good for us. Talismans? What kind of talismans? 
A fresh fish from Agatha Forest would fetch a fortune right now. Alright, this guy right here... This guy right here will buy the fish from Agatha Forest and possibly other places, I'm not sure, for a markup. Whereas you'd get 100 fish for, or 100 yen for a river crab at the, uh, at the other place in the, in the, uh, forest. This guy will give you 150. So basically, he'll give you, um, he'll give you an extra 50% of what it's worth. So, this guy is worth pretty good money to sell your stuff to. Actually, he might sell, he might sell, he might buy it for more than that because I'm pretty sure the giant salmon sold for 2,900. So he might buy it for okay, 7,400 for this guy for the giant salmon. Uh, let's see. By the way, I think you can fish with uh, with a uh, rabbit hat guy now if you want to. Let's see, 150, 700, and 7,900. I could have swore it sold for. Oh, sure. Now you give me the the night time. Uh, how much does this damn thing sell for? Because I could have swore it didn't sell for that much. I could have swore it was 2400 Either way, that guy will give you a nice little markup on, on fishing prices. So it makes your life nice and easy. Actually, will this guy over here, will he... S no, I don't think he will. So screw you. Uh, yeah, so it makes your life nice and easy to make money. Because you can fish up a good amount of fish there. And they'll all sell for a decent amount of that guy. You don't have to worry about running out of stock anymore. Uh, it doesn't mean he's going to get any new items, but and dis despite saying despite saying he has a sale, he doesn't have a sale. It's all the same price, so so don't even think you're going to get a discount. Uh, let's see, fishies. Oh, 4,900 yen. Okay, yeah. For some reason, I thought the crawfish sold for. 300 yen or 350 yen. So yeah, it's a 50% markup. So it's a nice little, it's a nice little way to get your profits up. No, I don't want to shop. Leave me alone. And where is that rabbit-eared bastard? I don't think you can fish during. Maybe you can. I'm not sure. Because I know some fish only come out at night time. Come here. Okay, he doesn't appear to be there right now, but um, I could have sworn maybe you have to maybe you have to clear the sapling in the next area to fish, or maybe you have to wait till daytime for it to start. But either way, you'll eventually be able to fish here, and you're gonna be able to sell your fish to that guy over there for a good chunk of money, and that'll make you rich fast, and you'll be happy, and you can buy a lot of stuff. It is kind of time-consuming because some of the bigger fish can be a royal pain in the ass to catch, but. For the most part, it's worth it. This is probably going to be the one trophy I'm not going to get since I'm not particularly good at the fishing mini game with the bigger fish. I'm not. I don't have the patience for it mainly. So I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you all the fish you can get and everything, but I just don't have the patience for it, patience for it myself. Um, where is that stupid bead? It's supposed to be like right here. Hang on. Supposed to be in between the rock and the bamboo trees and the hut where the guys are standing. Um, okay, let's see. Somebody might be talking. You know, you know, my notes might might be referencing something that's under that leaf pile that we can't get to. It's entirely possible because otherwise we'd be seeing the. We would be seeing the little light. Um, bamboo trees. I don't see any thing. Yes, I don't think it's. Yeah, I think it might actually be under that leaf pile. But anyways, let's get rid of our fish. And we have a few things we can do in this area. I've been sent to make some money actually. And yeah, you can carry up to 999 of the little fishes, so yeah, you can get a pretty good profit if you just sit there and catch the little guys for, like, forever. Because even, okay, let's say you catch just 10 crawfish, that's 7,000, that's 7,000 yen right there, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty lucrative business. It's very, it's very profitable.
Okay, let's go check on that fishing one more time real quick, because I could have swore you were able to do it right after... Right after doing... Um, well, right after getting in here, right after fixing the bridge. If you do have to wait, then I'll just post it in the video descriptions. And most of my fishing will be done off screen because it's kind of boring to watch and kind of irritating. And there will be several um, plot advancing fishing mini games that we'll have to deal, deal with anyway, so I'll be sure to show those on screen. But oh yeah, see, there's a little bastard. He's over there. Let's see if let's see if he'll actually let me. He should. If he doesn't, I'll headbutt him until he does. Okay, way to jump there, buddy. You know what? Let's catch a few fish anyways, just for the heck of it. Yeah, okay, we gotta watch them fish, but instead of watching them, we're gonna be actually doing all the work. I'm not gonna spend too long here, I just wanna catch one or two fish. See if I can't get to some of the bigger ones that are... Ooh, there's a decent sized one right there. And sometimes the shadows can be kind of confusing. Um, like, it'll look like it's a medium sized fish, and then it'll actually be like a, a small fish. Come on. Yeah, some of these guys, they take a... Yeah, see, like, that guy looks like he should be a smaller shadow, not the, not the medium sized shadow that he looked like he was. But maybe that's just me nitpicking. Yeah, and you gotta go through this little bit of dialogue right here every single time you catch a fish, so... That is mildly irritating in my opinion, but... Oh, well, it's the cost you pay to make yourself some money. And by the way, when you're, um... When you're pushing the control stick to the left or the right or whatever, kinda hold it down it Kind of hold it down into the uh, direction you're facing. Like if you're if you're holding it on the right, then uh, hold it down right, not just straight right. Or hold it down left. Uh, that makes it a little easier to switch your directions back to. Because a lot of the bigger fish, they'll um, they'll they'll turn around like really fast a lot. So it makes it easier to work with them if you if you have it more at an angle than. I think that's a new fish right there. I think that might be a sweet fish, actually. And that goby, sweet fish, whatever. Close enough. You see, this guy looks like he should be a medium sized fish, but he's probably going to end up being one of those crawdad bastards. And by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the, uh... Oh, you're not a... You're not a crawdad, you're a bigger fish. But yeah, the medium-sized fish usually take two slashes, the small takes one, and the bigger ones, they take three. Okay, so you're the sweet fish. And yeah, the more you catch, the bigger the fish will be, so... But if you... If you mess up on a fish, and you have to, like, restart, then you start back from the bottom of the food chain. You don't save, like, your fishing prowess progress. Come on. There we go. You're a big bastard. Not that big, I guess. So, yeah. It'd be nice if you could, like, save your progress and be like, Oh, I'm in the medium fishes right now. I'll take a break, come back later, and then I'll start back on the medium fishes. But, no, it's like, no, you'll start back on the little, on the little crab fishes. Okay, do you see how I uh, went all the way around that little fish right there to get to this fish right here? That's because if you accidentally touch, uh, it's the thing where if you touch more than two items, then it's not going to count either one of them, probably. Or it might count the first one, the smaller one that you don't want. And this guy's a little fast bastard. Yeah, see, this guy's going to be turning around. See, this is what I don't like about the fishing game. I'm, I'm yanking on my, con or pushing on my control stick. All the, as fast, as hard as I can, and it's barely getting this guy any closer. And by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned this also, but you'll know you're close to catching the little guy when he starts off in the back of the screen, and with the closer he gets to the front of the screen, the, the closer you are to catching the little booger. All right, let's try you. You look big enough. Come on. 
And yeah, if they're not like doing that little sweating animation that they look like they're doing, that means they're not being worn down at all. Come on. I hate it when they swim like straight away from you, because then you can't tell to then you can't tell to hold the control stick which direction. Alright, let's do one more, and then I'm going to say screw it, because I'm bored of fishing already. Ooh, look at those big bastards. Yeah, these guys will probably take two or three hits, I think. Alright, let's see how let's see how I do. Yeah, look, that guy, he's tearing up my health gauge. So, yeah, these guys are the pains in the butt. A lot of times, this is why I don't like fishing. By the time you actually, like, get them over here, if you're not careful, then... Half your health be gone, and you won't have enough for the next biggest fish that comes up. So, highly irritating, in my opinion. These guys like to switch around, so I'm gonna try to catch him. Come here. I think I'm gonna fail right here, and you're gonna see what happens when you fail. It's not a whole lot, but yeah, you just get pulled into the river. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of fishing. This is not something that I'm particularly good at. Yeah, no, I got better things to do. Nope, nope. A part of. A part of quit did you not understand? Yes, I'm gonna quit. What do you mean no luck? I got like eight fish. How many fish did I get? Let's see, fish tomes. I got two crawdads, one goby, two sweet fish, and two trout. So that's not too bad. That'll fork over a couple yen if I can remember the way out of the forest. But yeah, if you got if you got some time to spare and you want to make some money early in the game and a little later in the game when there's other places, then yeah, just come come fish for a little bit. Even the little fish, if you sell them at the right places, it'll, it'll give you a good chunk of change and you'll be able to afford stuff that you need. Um, for stuff coming up, you're going to want roughly... Assuming you're going to go buy all the dojo skills and you bought the ones that I have already, you're going to need 100000 for that skill at the dojo. And then there's a weapon in the town coming up that I believe is 50,000 yen. And you're going to need 1,000 yen for a side quest for this guy right here, which gives you praise. And two gold dust in the town coming up for 10,000 yen each. So I'd say 200,000 yen is about right. I mean, you don't got to buy it all away, obviously, but I like to get stuff when I can as soon as I can. Alright, 1400. These guys sell for a pretty good amount. Look at that, I'm almost close to my golden my golden fury attack, which trust me, it's, uh, it's a very unique attack. Yeah, we can't do anything over here, just so you know. It's all cursed and stuff. Um, so don't even don't even bother trying. By the way, I'm not sure if I showed you what happens if you go into a cursed zone. I probably have, but I just want to make sure. But yeah, the, it's like you're swimming and your health, your little swimming meter turns on and you lose... I don't think you... Wait, can you use your... Yeah, you can't use your celestial brush in here either. And I think it, yeah, see, it drains your ink too, so be careful in here. So it's not a good idea to end up in there. Power slash this little bastard, if I can ever. How about you work there, buddy? Come on, go over there. There we go. Alright, where's this taking us? To the famous tree, Cherry Breeze. Ah, darn it, that sounds like a guardian sapling. Why can't it take me to, like, the tree of supreme evil that just, like, crushes the entire land and ends the game in one fell swoop? That'd be nice. Or at the very least, a change of pace.
I don't think there's anything hidden in this little area right here. Except for I think there might be a boss battle. Yeah. I'm sure you remember this little bastard. Okay, how am I evil, Yogi, little bastard? But yep, it's that little Waka bastard again. Um, since I didn't explain him last time for the mythology, let me find my notes real quick and see if I can't figure this out real quick. Uh, let's see. By the way, in case you guys haven't realized, my little mythology lessons aren't all that great. I just found them on various like um, like Wik Wikipedia's and stuff like that, and I'm just basically reading you the information that I find. Just just in case you guys care about this kind of stuff. I mean, some of you do, some of you don't. But anyways, uh, Waka, he is based off a character named uh, Ushiwaka Maru. Um, and he was... That's basically the childhood name of a Japanese figure from mythology named uh, Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Uh, I probably didn't pronounce that right. Um, but anyways, his parents were killed by the powerful... Um, Tyra clan, uh, also known as Hiki, H-E-I-K-E, -E. again, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, um, and then him and his brother, Yoritomo, uh, they were allowed to live, but they were separated to opposite sides of Japan, so Ushiwaka, Waka, he grew up in a temple north of Kyushu, and he eventually managed to reunite with his brother a little later in his life, uh, he joined him as a general to defeat the, the Tyra clan, and they both did pretty well. He, uh, Waka got several good victories uh, under his belt, and eventually the Tyra clan was overthrown, so they were all happy and stuff like that. And then, for some reason after that, uh, after their victory, um, his brother Yorimoto arranged for, arranged for the death of Waka. I don't know why, maybe he was jealous or something. Um, and so Waka, he ran away basically and lived like a bandit for a few years with a couple of his most loyal lieutenants, uh, one of which was a guy named Benkei, who we will actually be seeing in this game. It's, he's not going to be related to Waka very much at all, but he's in the game. Um, but he was eventually found and he was surrounded and when he realized that he couldn't escape, he committed uh, seppuku, which is basically the Japanese word for suicide. It's where you... I'm not sure if it's just like this in every way, but for the most part, they stab themselves in the belly with their katana, and they die. So it's a pretty honorable way to commit suicide, I guess, in Japan. Um, but he's famous in... He's famous in Japan basically because he was a genius in battle, and his little tragic story was... Well, the tragic stories are always good for... for um, history. And actually, I, I, I said he was fictional. Um, he actually wasn't fictional. He actually was a real person in Japan. I don't know why I said he was fictional. But, yeah, there's uh, also many legends of stories about him in general. Um, like, when he, they say he learned how to fight by fighting, uh, by training with Tengus. Uh, those are the guys with the mask with the really long noses. Um, and how he's a beautiful, nimble, flute-playing warrior, which is why Waka is mildly effeminate in this version, and he has that flute that turns into his sword. So, yeah, that's my little lesson on Waka. Probably didn't make a whole lot of sense, but I tried. So, anyways, let's fight this little bastard. Okay, how are you the God's Gift to Man? Not even close. What do you mean, long time, LC? I saw you like two hours ago in in game story time. Wait a second, Did he, are you the one that set up that stupid log thing? How much you want to bet he arranged for that log to carry Susano down there so we could make the little bridge and get over here? You mean like my fist coming towards your face? Can you see that? Yeah, how come we didn't uh how come we didn't know that one there, buddy?
Well, that's a good tactic. Pretend I get in here, the little bastard. Hey, what do you mean? I did a very good job in that battle, if I do say so myself. Who are you calling washed up? You're the one with the weird hat thingy. Yeah, okay, if you're gonna, like, watch me, like, battle to the death, you could, like, use your little glowing lightsaber of doom you got there with the flute to help me out. You know what's weird? He has a sword in his belt, but then he also has his little flute that turns into a sword. So, maybe those are the knives he throws at us that are in his little scabbard right there? Okay, yeah, we gotta fight Mr. Waka again, and he's actually a little bit easier this time, in my opinion. Since you don't have to worry about the... all the water and stuff. So it makes your job a little easier, since you don't have to worry about constantly falling into the water and, you know, just failing at life. Probably not gonna finish him off all that fast again, but... At least I'm not going to be constantly failing like the chump that I was in the previous battle. But yeah, this is pretty easy. Just slash back his knives. When he gets stunned, go over and attack him. If you want to use something like your uh, Steel Soul Sake or whatever to do more damage, you know what? I might as well. Because I want to see if I can't get a good, a good ranking on him. Uh, let's see. Temporarily increase the Steel Fist, not Steel Soul. I don't think he's very effective. Oh, he is effective by power slash. I didn't think he was. Come on. Attack me with your dagger. I'm gonna try power slashing you when you're down. See how that see how that feels for you. There we go, that's better. Come on, buddy. Alright, let's see how much we do with our steel fist socket. Eh, a pretty decent chunk of damage. Nothing nothing to write home. Ah, oh, my health. My ink. That's not good for my health. Come on, buddy. Actually, give me a challenge here. No? Now that was easy. Much easier than it was last time. By the way, in case you don't know, uh, Ma Cherie is basically um, my love in French, I think. It's either my love or my friend. I don't remember. I remember I took French class in high school, but I don't remember a whole lot of it, even though I took three years. The only thing I remember is, uh, Fermi la bouche means, uh, shut your mouth. So I don't remember the rest of anything that I learned in those three years. Lake Harmi over on Shinshu Field yet. Uh, you know, over over by where the, uh, the shrine of the moon came? Yeah, I was over there. Didn't uh, get a whole lot done, but I was over there. Yeah, we kind of noticed that, actually. The Serpent Crystal. Okay, tell me where to get it, and I'll get it, and I'll go in there and beat Orochi for you. And you can sit out here and look, look like the little chump that you are. Yeah, couldn't she, like, send us a letter in the mail, be like, Hey, do you have any information on this item for me, buddy? You know, last time he gave me a prophecy, it almost ended up in Susano Drowned. A doggone... Div Fantastic pun there, buddy. Fantastic, if I do say so myself. Yeah. 
Yeah, we might as well. Well, considering we have a fair amount left to find, I'll assume we'll find some at some point. Oh, what? I beat him, like, super quick, and I still didn't get perfect time? Ah, oh, well. That's much better than the last time I did, where I think I got the saplings for each one. Okay, but anyways, if you see these bubbles right here in the water, uh, go ahead and power slash it to open up the chest, and we get a stray bead. Very nice. That would be stray bead number something. Uh, I think stray bead 21, I'm not sure. I don't know why it never says new for the stray beads. But yeah, that was 21, so the first one for Taka Pass, there's six of them. I think we can get three at the, when they first get here after restoring the sapling. Let's see, bestiary. I don't see what I don't know why it gives two entries for Waka. Not really sure. Sometimes young and pretty, sometimes an old hermit. Oh sure, you're the one writing the the description, so of course people are going to say yours is accurate. If it was some other guy writing it, they might say his is accurate. Okay, leave me alone. Alright, I don't think there's anything we can do down here, so we just got to head up here, and yes, the Guardian Sapling is going to be in this area up here, so let's get that done, and this is kind of a long episode, but we had a few things we had to accomplish. We had a boss fight, we got a Guardian Sapling coming up. So I'd say, I'd say a longish episode isn't too bad. I might just make the next one a little shorter just to make up for it. Don't worry, we'll figure out a way to get these fire chests unfired eventually, just not any time within the next couple minutes. It's a good thing we have that we have that peace bell, otherwise these guys are trying to kill you like the little bastards that they are. I wish these damn trees gave you more praise than just the the one or whatever that they do. I mean heck, even a sparrow gives more praise than these guys. I don't think there's any trees up here, is there? Eh, if not, if there are, we'll find them later. Oh look, there's that windmill that they were talking about, I think. Well, you can kinda see it. You can see the outline at least, and that must be a damn big windmill to see it all the way over here. But anyways. Oh yeah, damn bridge. Not sure how I missed that, but I will. The point is, there is where we need to go. And voila! I don't think you can skip this scene, like, ever, since it's always a different area. I mean, you could skip it in a New Game Plus, which this game does have, but you can't skip it on your first time through. Now that does look like a pretty nice valley to hang out in. I like those trees. I'm not sure if they have a particular name, but I like the way they look. Alright. Yeah, talk fast back to normal. We can find brush techniques. Good for us. Big windmill. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Like next episode. Alright guys, uh, that's going to do it for this episode, and next episode, we're going to explore uh, Taka Pass here, and what I'm going to do next episode is, we're going to go back to Kamiki Village for uh, something we can get with the Vine technique, and then we're going to head over to the Dojo to get the Golden Fury technique, and then we're going to meet back here at the tree, 
to work our way backwards from the tree since there's stuff over here we can get but I spent too much time doing other stuff now so yeah I'm gonna go fish for a little bit off screen and then I'll meet you over in Kamiki Village uh, next time so guys thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time have a good night